All right, here we are. You have now entered the agency. I'm your host, Agent M. Bay, and I'm here with a fellow artist, Kali, old classmate, John Nichols, uh, more formally or Instagrammerly known as John D. Ill Arthur. Um, yeah. John, what's going on, man? We just did this, but you know, what's up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Um, so just to give a little background of, of how we even know each other, uh, we both were Hampton University graduates out of the uh, fine arts department, um, more specifically graphic design. Uh, and I think you actually came in. That's, 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 I'm trying not to go into this picture without going into this picture. I'm going to okay. do it and I'm going to jump back. I want to give us some nice, decent screen time before we get mm -hmm. too, too deep into it. But uh, this is the, I had just had to get into this is the very first. <laughs> hey, this is, this is home to us from opening oh, that too fast. Uh, but yeah, like this is home to us on the low, you know? Right. I actually haven't there. been back in it in a long time, in like yeah. double digit years. Cool. And I've been back to campus. It's just yeah. been like, and yeah. uh, low key, when I went back, I was looking for Bon Tons Honda. Just <laughs> Cause I still, I still have a grudge, man. Oh, yeah. sure. So you was one of those graduates. I right hear. <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest part about it was when I was interviewing for my job that I got now as a teacher. Yeah. Um, there was a Hampton graduate who was the art teacher that checks you out. You know, make sure you got some type of skill. Right. Um, she graduated in like eighties or nineties, mm -hmm. and she was like. Did you have to deal with bond times? I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, bond times. And she just made this, this like, right. Like, Thanks. I don't even know what she did to this woman. But yeah. I just know, I just felt yeah. like that. Yeah, but you, 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 yeah, you got the job. <laughs> you had to deal with five times. You, you got the yeah. job. Don't worry about it. You good. I'm going to look out for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I've run into her, you know, quite a few times. But I was, you know, living in the area for a while, so that that makes sense. But um, I think you'll probably like most of the oldest professors. They all like gotten a lot softer in their years. I know every like homecoming to me and Lisa have gone back and seen her. She's always been like, "Oh, why don't you go back and get your doctor? Why don't you go do an extra thing?" And be like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." Yeah. But, um, but yeah, she, you know, she's still still good people, so, you know, whatever it is. But um, yeah, those are the days. We was. We was Hamptonians together. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I think you came into the program um, after me, so I wanted to hear about, like, you know, what what inspired you to maybe, like, I don't know if it was changing your major or getting into the, the graphic design arts program at Hampton, because uh, I think that really influences where you are now. Yeah, uh, it kind of does. It plays a big part. Um, so, along or the short of it, before I even like met you. In class and all that stuff. Yeah. I didn't do any art 10 years prior. Wow. So I had like a really bad middle school kind of jury thing to get into the school. And they were like, you're shading, is this and that, blah. And like elementary school on up, I'm the man. Like I'm mm -hmm. the man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Sylvester the cat was my specialty. Man, like I'm straight. And then it was like, nah, this sucks. And I was like, well, I guess this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't do nothing until, uh, and I was a psychology major at first. Mm. And uh, you got to take the elective art. And then that's how I ran into Mr. Solomon. Yeah. And he's the one that pulled me aside and was like, you have a, a talent for this. Have you ever thought about switching you? So he put it in my, my ear. Mm. And then I was like, you know, not necessarily broke artists, but what would I even do with an art degree? Right. And then he's like, you know, look at me. Do I look like I'm a starving artist? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the like, thing. Okay, 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 okay. So then he was like, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you know, there's an industry. So then he took me down to Mr. Martin. And mm -hmm. Mr. Martin talked to me about it. And uh, like, maybe two weeks later, I switched it. And especially because all I had to do was take Algebra 1. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fact. Statistics, they sneak that under me. Right. Yeah. And I got, yes, I, I came into the program, like, I, I finished high school taking, like, calculus. So I was like, I'm going to college. I need to be taking high grade math. But I wanted to take, I was the type of person where I was like, I didn't get the grade I wanted in calculus in high school. So I'm going to take it again, even though I passed it. 
And I, you know, I did that, and then I realized I didn't need to take that high level math. <laughs> so I was like, well, let's call that an elective now. <laughs> and let me go do the other two easy maths just so I can get two more easy A's. <laughs> call it day. 117, 119, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> Easily. That's what's up. Um, so yeah, I think you, you so you came in, and I was, I guess, a year ahead of you in the program because of that, even though you're older than me and had been in Hampton. So what year did you come into Hampton? 2000. Yeah, 2000. Okay. So 2000, 2004, I was, no, 2000, 2006, I was still trying to do that psychology thing. Mm -hmm. And then I was balancing uh, Greek life and yeah, everything yeah. else with it. And um, so I just made this this conscious decision, like once I switched the majors, right. like I got to get out of here and it's two years to do it. So yeah, just get it done. Right. Yeah. So um. So yeah, that was that was that was, that was I was thinking of that just because like, even though you were older than me, it was like watching you from from the other you know from the other other direction. I guess it was like, oh okay, we got in the program, and then like you and Elisa was like you know kind of neck and neck kind of yeah. doing things together. So I, I always kind of like saw y'all's relationship more than me and you specifically because I you know was kind of you know, through her experience watching her like oh yeah me and John we going back and forth we working on stuff together. So it was always like that connection there. So that was dope, man. Um. And so, yeah, like, you graduated in 07? 10. 10. Yeah. 2010, I'm tripping. tripping. You, you yeah. When you graduated, are you? Uh -huh. I'm bugging. Yeah. You were. I knew there was somebody else in there. I was thinking about this recently. I was like, what's John? Did John graduate yeah. with us or did he graduate uh, the year after? Bro, I hustled. I'm bugging. <laughs> <laughs> My fault. <laughs> Just, <Thank you. laughs> but I think it was because you probably were working so hard to catch up to that. Yeah. To where, like that yeah. last year, you it was you was right there with us, and it was like, all right, well, we got John in here now. Made the mm -hmm. MMA 2010. My fault. This changes the story. <laughs> 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 My bad. <laughs> I'm tripping. Um, so yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, I'm tripping. So yeah, we did. Yeah, we came out the same year. Um, and then, like, what was what was what was it for you? Like after that, um, yeah. So like, as far as exploring after you got your degree and what you were trying to do career wise, so, looking for it. Once I got the degree, my uh, my big goal was to be like a creative director, mm -hmm. like, an advertisement something, have a whole bunch of other graphic designers under me. Uh, my first job was at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center here in Greenbelt. And it was like uh, with the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. So basically, I had to make recruitment material for like students all over America because oh, they wow. compete. All the space centers compete for like the top students to come and work because that's uh, that's how they feed the contractors in. Right. So I was doing that. Um, I I would just remember this experience where I designed this spaceman made out of words. He was like super dope. I put all this hard work into it. Yeah. And then uh, it was my first time dealing with like a, a person above me that controls a creative thing. Yeah. And he was like his hand is backwards. And I was like, what are you talking about? His hand is backwards. Your thumb can't do this. And he's doing this. He's, he's raising, you know. Yeah. And he was like, nope, just fix it. And I'm like, what do you mean? Nope, just fix it. And I was like, nah, this ain't for me. Like <laughs> off the rip, yeah, could just go back and fix it. <laughs> but you know, you you press on. You got the degree. Um, and I was like, yeah, let me do. I went to full sale for the masters. Mm. Um, because I thought that was going to improve things. Uh, but I just basically bounced around from like government agency to government agency. Yeah. Um, but I was always able to work faster than what was required. So I would mm -hmm. just have this time anyway yeah. to still work on my stuff before I knew what I was doing. Right. Yeah. So that early kind of incubation phase where you're like, all right, I, I, I experienced that too. Like I got out, like, at least coming out of Hampton. Like I didn't feel like I came out with my thing yet. So it was like, mm -hmm. I did all that to learn how to like, as soon as you like still working with, working from the basics. Yeah. And then it took some time or some years to really like discover something that I was really into as far as creatively coming up with a style to where I was able to be like, all right, this is mine. So yeah, I, I can see that too, like with, with your work. I think That's all of that. that is, they told yeah. us though that you don't have a style back then. They, they put that 
They preached mm-hmm. that. You know? yeah. And they, they were kind of right. Like, mm-hmm. you discover that, you really discover that later. Or what yeah. a style is. Like, we just, if I can replicate it and nobody else can do it, that's me. But yeah. There's something, <laughs> yeah. There's something deeper than that. Yeah, like I had to, for me, I had to like experience some personal life things and all that to like, you know, put all that into what it is that I was creating and why I liked it so much and why these are my things. So yeah, yeah, I, I definitely get that. Um, and so, so you're bouncing around doing your, your jobs. Um, and then how long, how long was that? Like a year wise, you got to, you can like count. I put a decade into that. Oh, wow, yeah. And the worst part about it was, I was overly educated, then I was the youngest, and I'm the only person doing that job. So there's not like a graphic designer and a photographer or me and another designer. It's just I'm the creative department. Right. And I'm working with like older people who just wanted to be in Microsoft Word. And I'm like, nah, <laughs> that's not my <laughs> like not at all. It no, it's not that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I did that for way too long. But teaching is the family business. Yeah. So I thought that was like the escape. So I, the whole time I was doing the government stuff, they have this program here in PG County, the resident teacher program, where it's like Teach for America except lax. They base it on, you know, on your work experience, your job history and stuff yeah. and your college credits to determine what subjects you can teach. And surprisingly, anybody can teach math. Um, that was <laughs> that was available for years, but yeah. it's just everything just lined up at the right time when I was really, really kind of done with where I was, uh, that they were looking for art teachers. Yeah. So uh, I used my paternity leave as my two weeks notice mm. and it was like I was like Joel man you born on a Friday so I just got to roll that like it was dope and um I just never came back wow never, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think that. <laughs> I'm out of here and like, coming nah that was two that was two weeks I notified you <laughs> and the <contractions laughs> came that I'm not <laughs> I feel that. Yeah, I didn't even get a chance to send my job like a, a two weeks notice when I like, went to grad school. Like, I got it. Like, honestly, let me tell you the story real quick. Let me see if I try to tell it fast. So I was in New York uh, after a J. Cole concert in Virginia Beach. No matter. Um, I get a phone call from Solomon. He's like, yo, I think your application for grad school is good. I think you're straight. This is like Labor Day. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, school starts in like, a week, bro. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm in school now. I'm working in Maryland. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like, I'm gonna make this work. Yeah, I'm like, you mean you mean to tell me I need to be prepared to go to school in two weeks and I got a whole life I gotta like switch up? <laughs> he was like, he just hit me with one question. He's like, so do you want to do what you're doing right now for five years or for the next five years? Or are you trying to do something different? I was like, all right, I'll call the people tomorrow. <laughs> See what this is about. <laughs> Called my sister and I was like, yo, I got this opportunity. I might be going to school. I might have to quit. <laughs> and then I like only like just gotten like I got like a, a promotion at my job working in field engineering for a concrete business. I just gotten a, like uh, a promotion for that over the past couple months. So I was actually I was like moving up in that. You know what I mean? That was decent money or, or the potential yeah. to make some decent money. So I was just like, I'm, I was, yeah, I was kind of sitting, I was like, I'm cool, you know, it's whatever. Like I'm, I'm doing math and it might not be art, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and so whatever, but like it kind of worked out that way. And so like, I got, only got like one, like, ang- like semi angry call. I was like, why didn't he tell me that my, my new boss at the time? I was like, why didn't he tell me? I told him, and he knew that I was interested in grad school though. And I was just like, uh, well, you know, I, it just kind of came up and I wasn't sure what the kind of thing it was going to be. So whatever it happened, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's what's up. Um, do I want to get into the tattoo one? Okay, because they can give an interesting. We can already given you your timeline. So now we can kind of we can like drop in between, right. go, go back and drop in and talk about some of those things. So I do. I didn't want to share the screen. I was gonna look at when you was uh like doing tattoos. Right. Next one. It was just as dang. All right, here we go. Uh, so I just you know pulled a couple of joints from your from your IGs and try to relate them. Uh, right. And the only reason I pulled these is because I was. I was into um, 
it's not really into I, I got into like a YouTube fixation real quick with uh, one of the tattoo shows that they got. And I was just like, oh, yeah, I remember when they had to like tattoo on like a pig skin. This kind of reminded yeah. me that like, tattoo on orange and getting some practice and familiarity. So like what was what was this kind of exploration here when you were doing tattooing? So these pictures are actually from that job that I quit. But like, so what I was doing was somehow I figured out that my brain works best like 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. After 3 p.m., I don't feel like doing nothing. But that's like a, such an odd hour because everybody is 9 to 5. Yeah. So I would come to work early with my tattoo stuff, set up, practice until people came in, put mm -hmm. it away, then do the graphic design stuff, then start maybe working on books and sketches until it's time to come home. Or when people come back, you just switch screens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, just What's up? But, uh, I was doing all of that, doing that, but I actually fell in love with tattoos in Hampton. Okay. Like, my first tattoos, I got them simultaneously, like on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And to this day, uh, Elisa saved me from one of the worst tattoo ideas ever. It was a freak Nick tattoo. Oh, the wow. Those dudes. Because I thought that thing was so hilarious. Um, <laughs> she's like, never do that. And I was like, yeah, I it. Makes, sense. <laughs> makes sense. But um, I just always been like fascinated with the culture of it. Mm. Um, and then just having like a special kind of niche in here yeah. for the fact that the industry doesn't, well, it's getting better now, but like, darker skin clients yeah. and being limited to like heavy shading and a lot of open skin to make things look like they're rising and falling and give depth right but, um, as the tools progress as you know techniques progress it's gotten a lot better but that was kind of another main reason why i wanted to get into it too just to be a, a positive right uh, positive artist in it especially you know i, I love my black folks that would have been my yeah. <laughs> So uh, I started it and then I had to leave it. I got rid of all my stuff. I had everything you could think of, like the, mm. the trays, the power supplies, the meals, like everything. Mm -hmm. uh, but the space and the time wasn't right. So I just got rid of everything. Uh, that's a little bit of the, the bipolarness, like just instant drastic decisions like that. Right. Now, looking back, it was like, nah, you shouldn't have, you should have just stuck with it. Yeah, because you ended up getting everything back anyway. So, oh wow! Yeah. Um, <laughs> so now I've got my uh, my studio. I've gone to the lengths of treating the floor, mm. so yeah. it's like um, it's sealed. So if there was like uh, blood or something, yeah, sanitize. Um, right. Everything is on rollers, so I can bring in my chairs and my trays and my equipment, and I got my cordless power supply. So I'm running it out of here. Mm -hmm. And um, the only thing that I ever regret about it is just not getting rid of all that stuff. Like, just, yeah, yeah instead of, I was like, I could be, you know, 10 years ahead. But thinking about just how I am with art and how these things keep happening, like, mm -hmm. even college, like, I'm just going to jump into this thing in two years and get it done. Yeah. Or I'm just figure out how to tattoo and teach myself and get it done. Right. And, you know, it's, that's where it is. That's where I'm at with that. It's a part of what I want to do. It's what I see myself doing uh, when I think of being a full-time artist. Right. It's part of it. It's like a three-prong kind of thing. Oh, good. Yeah, save that for a little bit later. That's, that's one of my like favorite topics to kind of talk about from my own experience and then to hear other people's or ideas or thoughts behind that, especially as they're like, creating what that looks like for themselves but right. i think this conversation kind of really is going to get into so um so then i want to take this into is it the no nah, i'm gonna save that so the books right uh yeah. i remember this one when you was like promoting this one heavy you know as i was like scrolling instagram today or yesterday i was just like oh yeah i remember he was doing these back in the <laughs> day and then like i was trying to like understand like time wise i was like was this before? Is that, like i think the, the earlier images you got on your instagram yeah. um then another nothing said like specifically what the 42 days was about so i was like i was trying to remember i was like what was it about was it like 42 days about like towards something whatever so i'd like once yeah, i finally yeah. went back 
You can go ahead and tell what it is. I, I didn't it was, remember. Uh, but. It was like my take on I care like so it was 42 days into my marriage when mm-hmm. I realized this is just a big TV sitcom. Like, <laughs> like, True. <laughs> this kind of just these weird events that you just ex- exaggerate and that's it. So um, like it was a, a little bit of art reflecting life of that time period of my life. So I was doing comics like that. Cause I mm-hmm. always, I've, I've, you know, I've always been, I like telling stories yeah. even like, yeah, just through my art, just this, that's how I like to communicate. So that's what this project was about. Um, then the children's books came later. So I, yeah. So my first book, uh, again, written drawn all that stuff yeah. on the job <laughs> uh, but i had done it for my oldest son um he has autism and he is adhd he has adhd okay and um when i would leave there would be this kind of he's going forever like mm-hmm. kind of a meltdown thing which is right. kind of, is typical yeah. um and he's got this connection to numbers like Mm -hmm. this dude in math and I don't even know he's kindergarten and I don't he's like dividing and I (laughs) like this dude like what's 16 minus 5 and I was just like get a calculator yeah right you know (laughs) it's like you're the calculator right so it's a number book um, yeah and it was uh 1 through 10 and I list like daddy loves you more than uh Two free pizzas. Yeah, it's just me and pizza. Daddy loves you more than uh, eight hours at work. And it's me bored at work looking at his picture. Right. So I wanted to let him know, like, even though I'm out in the world doing all this stuff, you know, you're still with me. And then there's numbers that kept him engaged. Mm-hmm. So I would read the book, you know, before I would leave. I read the book at nighttime, like it became his uh, a part yeah. of his routine. So his hair definitely doesn't look like that. You yeah, know, no, his, his, his hair is popping. You're going to make it Lisa sad. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's where it started. That's where it started. That's yeah, that's, that's, that's a, honestly, that's a powerful story. Like, again, I was, I was saying, like, these are, it's much like, I, I bought the book, so I have it, I have it on Amazon Kindle. Because, um, oh. I, I, like, I think around the same time as you, you had your son, I, uh, like, I had nieces that were, you know, growing up and, I thought, even though like none of my sisters had sons at this point, I just thought it was like relevant. I thought like I wanted to support from that from that perspective too. I was like, man, like I might be an uncle, and this is how I feel about my nieces. And so I'm trying to, you know, I'm just like whatever. Like if they do have a kid or somebody does, like just let them know this resource or whatever exists. So I thought yeah. it was really dope. But even like just like, hearing like that that you were connecting that to not it wasn't just a you know I want to make this as a book for my son, but it was like this directly relates to his experience and connects really closely with him, but it's still simple enough to where anybody can be like pick it up and, and, and enjoy it. Yeah. So like yeah that's 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 like that's yeah I'm just I'm just really impressed by that adding in the story to that. That's like really awesome. Um I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. Like, yeah, man. I always tell myself, man, I'm doing better than Van Gogh, no matter what happens. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, at least I sold out my books the first time. Facts. <laughs> that was true. Um, so, then speaking of uh, the books, because I see, like, this picture is, uh, you know, physical copies, but, you know, just to let people know, like, it also exists um, digitally, and you can get it on Amazon with, like, all you do, you do all your books that way? Uh, when I was, because I actually... Shit this so I printed your daddy loves you. I printed your a dog is not a cat, a cat is not mm-hmm. a business partner. And I was gonna print your mommy loves you, but then that one I just did digitally. Okay. Because uh he just it, we just easier that way. Mm-hmm. It's like we were it was an in-house kind of thing. Right. Um yeah, so I was Self-publishing. I was yeah. using uh, this place, uh, Lightning Press, up in New Jersey. Uh, they don't give me anything. To, <laughs> yeah. Money. But yeah. Um, it was one of those things where a good friend suggested I 
to do this. And then mm -hmm. it was entertaining my kids. And yeah. uh, I would, because I was doing other people's books too, I was like really in that world of just going to Borders, sitting. Yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> borders oh, yeah. Sitting and looking at other children's books and how those illustrated styles were. Yeah. Um, so I was like really, really into it, but I was mainly just drawing stuff because my kids like just drawing cartoons for them. Yeah. 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 I forgot, I forgot, I forgot I had this picture next. I thought it was, I thought it was, yeah. it was, a, it was a good picture to me. It was like, but like, <laughs> I also just to throw in like, you know, cause people can see artists or see people as whatever you, they might, you know, see one thing, but it's like, well, this is how I'm incorporating. Like this, this is a closely, close family knit experience. Yeah. We're all yeah. doing this together really. Um, yeah. you know, going out, I think your, your caption for this was like your, 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 your like your biggest seller or whatever, something to that nature. Like he's he's the one that's bringing in the clients. So you know, being him being there, it's like oh, oh yeah, he's he my book and he goes my inspiration. So <laughs> <laughs> that's my salesman. Um, yeah, that was the first kind of vendor pop up shop mm -hmm. I ever did. Um. Yeah, I always include them along for the yeah. ride. I'm like really fortunate to have uh, creative kids mm -hmm. and to be able to see like how they prefer to be creative and then be really fortunate enough to be like, okay, I understand that because I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing that too and we can share right. it. Yeah. So while... You know, Doughboy Joel is more painting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Jonas and Jojo is more into the tattoo because that's precision and yeah. for him. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's I always keep them along for the ride. They they with me everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And then you just mentioned something about um, working or, or doing a illustrating other people's books. So I thought that was really interesting when I saw this one. Cause I thought it was, you know, initially I thought it was like, oh, this is his book. When I was looking, like, nah, like you just illustrated it yeah. for the, for somebody. So like, what was what is that kind of a uh, um, relationship been like as far as building up that clientele and that business uh, model for illustrating other people's books? Um, when I was heavy into it, it was really fun making people's dreams like into a, a reality. Right much different than graphic design like when you get a design brief it's very cold i like this color i don't like mm -hmm. that color um use a cupcake don't let it do. it's so rigid but when you are listening to someone tell you their story and their inspiration for their book and how they came up with it and they're usually a little uh shy about it yeah. some people are Oh, it's like this is my my thing, and that's fine. But some people, you and those are the ones I really like working with, where they're just like, I never did this before. I'm so nervous, and they just kind of hand you their baby. Yeah, it's like sorry, right. I got you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, so nowadays, when it comes to books, I do covers, mm -hmm. um, like young adult kind of things, because when you're illustrating someone else's book, consistency is so key. Yeah. You have to spend all the time drawing a character from the left to the this to the that to the up to the down. Right. And, and you know, procreate helps. Again, they don't pay me money. Yeah. Uh, or you money. But yeah. <laughs> so that helps. But before, like when I was doing this, I was using a Waco tablet. And oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was like shaky and all that stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah, I love that. I love that part of illustrating other people's books mm -hmm. and yeah because it's like i've been there um i love their causes and then i especially love when they're like i love your work so you yeah. can do what you want to do yeah so yeah i was, I was curious about yeah. that because like when i think of like a, a children's book like a dr seuss or something like that in my mind i'm thinking well, all those illustrations look the same so his style can stay consistent but like I never thought of like earlier in somebody's career where they might be illustrating other people's book and have to adapt a style towards whatever somebody else is looking for. Cause this looks very much like what you yeah. already create. Mm -hmm. But if somebody was like, I don't want what you do. Like, I don't want it to be like this or, you know, give you some references. It's almost like, you know, logo works like, Oh yeah. Uh, I like what you do, but I want something like this. And it's like, yeah. that's what that we person does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So like this looks like it was a good project because it was like, well, I got to do me for the most part, and yeah. you know, it kind of works well. That turned me on to what I really should be doing. You know, mm -hmm. like even though I'm taking criticism about what they would like changed on it, it's just it's just different. It's like a more friendly, we're on the same level, we're working together. Yeah. Versus, you know, that incident at NASA or, or you know, working with Maryland and whatever, where it's just it's got to change because I'm in charge. You know? Right. So, yeah. um, and that's the other thing about books, like you hit it on the head, adapting your style mm -hmm. to, um, like, if it's a fantasy book, your characters have to look, you're probably going to be drawing full length, you're probably going to be drawing yeah. action stuff. You know, if it's uh, like an ABC book, it's going to be simple, it's going to mm -hmm. be lots of round, you know, but you still got to just deliver, you know, without mm -hmm. too much of your, your sauce in it. So right. that's so why it's like covers. It's just one big thing. Right. <laughs> yeah. You walk away after that. It's like, all right, Yo. cool. I did your poster. We done. Mm -hmm. Figure out the rest of your home. <laughs> um, is it, I think I think there's an image of you, yeah, drawing a truck. <laughs> uh, this okay. this segues into it's funny because it's like it's a it's like travel, so it's like this segues into the next section. Um, this is gonna like segue into to, to, uh, the like a sketching slash what you're doing now portion. Um, and somewhere in here, I wanted to like talk about teaching because like we both have that as an experience. And I, well, I just I just go ahead and say it now. Um, I think I was listening to, I was I was I was watching your YouTube like because um, I. Yeah, I think I, I found, I realized you had a YouTube channel. So let me go check that out. So I watched a couple of videos on there. I pretty much watched everything through that, like once the, the drawing of the woman, which I have it here later, so we can talk about that. But I watched that whole thing. And I, but I was listening to how you were like speaking about art as an educator and like mm -hmm. how, like a lot of it felt very similar because it was like you were talking about what you wanted to do to that piece, but then the type of like ideas that you were expressing what you wanted to do sounded like very much from like, oh, I mean, it sounds like it's like, I'm teaching a class right now. So this is what it's like in the classroom. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'm curious, uh, necessarily curious, but um, well, for one, you could, I don't know, this looks dangerous to be doing it in the first place, unless you was in traffic. <laughs> I was. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, I was like, you got to be sitting still. <laughs> traffic down, I took a picture and just was on the iPad, leaning on the steering wheel. Just yeah, morning like, commute. So, oh, yeah, this is like, a fake. It looks like a sleepy truck. It's a fact. Yeah, so I was like, some of this looks a little too perfect because that car in there, but then some of it is it's like, how much time did he have to actually pull this off? Nah, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, and so yeah, we'll, we'll get into the sketching stuff too. But I, I think a lot of what I'm curious about now is just like your portraiture work and what you, which like how you got to where you are now. So I think I'm like the pictures that I pulled was kind of referencing that. And, um, and so and I just really like I enjoy you know sketchbook work. I'm in sketchbook all the time. Right. So like seeing something like what you have here, like on the right. Um, even though like the equation is backwards more so because like all right, this this is where you kind of started and this is where you know you kind of get to a final product of this. Kind of Picasso, uh, cubist face. Um, yeah. But I mean, like, what's what's the what's like the doodle life for you? Like, I see this. Oh, I just noticed that road going through the. That's dang. I didn't even notice that before. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it's also ties back into like the tattoo stuff too. Like we had earlier, and like just kind of sketching and stuff. And so, like, what's what what is that space for you? Like the sketchbook. What is what does that space mean for you? So. To, all right, so in order to explain how I got to where I am with a sketchbook, because my sketchbook is basically my iPad, I had to, like, just accept the fact that that is a, like, non-traditional way to do it and be all right. Yeah. Like, for me, I, I love the fact that I bought a sketchbook. I feel like I'm going to fill this thing with so many great ideas. Mm -hmm. And then, and like, that's that one down there in the middle with the guy who has a two on his cheek. Yeah. Which is also a Jonas thing because okay. you see me and I have to write a number. So mm -hmm. if you ever see that type of thing hidden, 
is because he walked up on me while I was working. Yeah. And demanded I put in a number. So that's hard. Yeah. A lot of these faces, there's like sevens or fives and eights and thirty threes and stuff. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, I just had to become really comfortable with the fact that I don't have to make a masterpiece out the gate every time. Yeah. And I don't have to share everything every time. Some stuff I can just do just because I don't, to not care about it, just to mm-hmm. get stuff out, you know? And um, that is now part of my, like, daily routine. Nice. But once I just kind of lower it, like, you know what? You're doing your own thing. Other people can sit down on a bench and draw an entire right. scene in their sketchbook with a little technical pen and a coffee, and that's awesome. Yeah. You admire the heck out of it. But that's not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There with your iPad and sketch out an entire that's not even how you work right so you just do your thing how you do your thing so what what I'm doing now with these sketches um because I've got I can't like canvases because I hate painting so yeah. I'll draw out and like, this looks awesome I don't want to touch it so I'll take a picture and I'll say well I'll, I'll see take a picture of it trace it and procreate and then lose myself and actually paint it there. Right. The space on the left, um, that one came out of just working really slow and throwing lines methodically. Yeah. But one on the the right with the, the guy with the swirls and all the, the stuff mm-hmm. you see behind him, that one was in the sketchbook and I was just kind of moving as fast as possible. Mm. So it's like, just the oh, just I love the fact that I just made my lane for me with it kind of yeah. in the process and just yeah. If I want to continue this, I can. You know, if I want to finish it, I can. If I want to come back to it later, yeah. whatever, it's there forever. It's on my iPad. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was having an interesting conversation with a guy I was doing a, a collaboration with before I moved out here, and we were talking about sketching and like the the concept of sketching it as opposed to like you know what traditionally it might be looked at as um he was because he was talking about from his perspective and, and what it is that he's creating and he was like maybe like you know the research or things that i'm doing that influence or reference my work like because his work he paints like he does like these uh trump lowell type paintings um that are like really sarcastic and kind of parodies on just like um pop culture um, and so for him, sketching is kind of maybe like just making a quick graphic of some of those ideas and as opposed to just, you know, typing it out like a, you know, a snarky message, you know, doing it in, in you know, on a, for an Instagram post. And that's for him a way just like having, I, you know, just to, to, to have an idea and just, and that's really yeah. like all sketching is just like, just let out a couple of ideas. Cause when I start to look at my sketchbook, I'm just like, I almost feel like, I feel like I see myself thinking, <laughs> you know, I'm just like, yeah. oh yeah, that's what I was talking about. And I can have a whole conversation with you. Um, so I'm like, that was, that was really interesting. Even like, like, even like, like, a, um, the same thing is like, you know, if you, you could, you're putting up your, like, uh, your vision board or, or put your, your idea board together, it's another form of sketching, you know, it's just like, all right, let me put these things in here and I'll use them as reference or influence for my next project or something like that. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I like to hear that you like, you know, I had to define what sketching is for me. Uh, so that I can, you know, whatever, progress forward and what it is that I'm doing. Because, you know, again, like you said, none of these are, like, final products. But at some point, you'll be able to be like, oh, yeah. Like, at matter of fact, like, the one at the bottom with the guy with the swirly beard, I pulled yeah. that one because I remember when I was watching your, your uh, video of the woman, um, I just pulled this. All right, this, I want to talk about it, too. But I was watching a video of the woman uh, piece, and you were talking about how you, like, at the last one, you were talking about how like, you putting backgrounds in it. They were, like, you know, referencing... Uh, real life places or so people can kind of connect to your, you know, your, your, where you're at. And I was just like, when I saw this your sketch, I was just like, I wonder if he realized he was doing that at this point or if it was just something. Oh, that then, no. <laughs> you know, that I, was, I was trying to figure out what was the best way to paint for me because I did feel stuck in a box. Yeah. I love working in black and white. Like even back in college, I love mm-hmm. getting my pencils. Just like leave me alone. Thank you. But um, so I was trying, I was like, I gotta, I want to be able to express myself more. So I, I gotta learn color. Mm-hmm. So I was messing with watercolor and acrylics and stuff. So I was watching videos on how to do uh 
of watercolor city backgrounds. Mm-hmm. So that's where that came from. I was just practicing. Yeah. And I just interviewed on top. So that one, yeah, was just completely mm-hmm. made up, which is awesome when that happens, when you can make up something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I had. I think I had that same kind of experience when it came to to painting because it was something that I feared and it was a, like kind of scared of, and I kind of faked it and was just like, no, nah, I don't paint. Like trying to claim it as like this is just yeah. something I do. I was like, no, nah, I'm more so afraid because I don't know how. I don't think I, and I had to define what painting was for me and, and had to explore color. Like that's what my work is now. It's like I'm really just exploring color because I'm trying to understand it better and better. And now I'm, I'm like in your know, kind of like I'm, I'm enthralled by it. You know, I'm stuck with it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember. I remember when I do. I remember like when this when this this drawing here hey, hey, when you were working on this one. I thought it was just so like fun, you know. And even and maybe now like hearing the stories you were telling about your son. Now I'm like looking at it differently because yeah. now I'm looking at it as like now I understand like this is this really reflects his mind and where he might be at. You got the numbers in there, so that's mm-hmm. yeah. Like, you might not even need to talk about it. I think I talk, <laughs> I talk about it. Like that's that's um, yeah, it, it means so much more now. It's um. Oh man, you hit it. So I drew it when I first we first learned about the diagnosis when I first learned. Okay. I was like, what is that? You you start to match up the behaviors with the diagnosis, you know. Right. So this is, must be like what he's experiencing and stuff. So he's he's come out of his shell a lot more, mm-hmm. but you can always kind of tell like all of this stuff was so all, all of his dreads are like his interests or what mm-hmm. he was would talk about or what I could get him out of his shell about. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's numbers, his favorite type of number stickers from school. Uh, he's upset, the digital analog fonts, uh, RCA mm-hmm. plug and stuff like that. Um, but he was a very, he was a very serious. Now he's like Mr. Personality. So that's why space and everything. Yeah. Great. But, you know, they talk about the over stimulation so I just imagine like him is just kind of this wave of noise sometimes. Mm-hmm. But he's you know he's he's a lot better, a lot better. But yeah, so that's that's kind of what was going on with that. It was just this is how I see him, you know. Right. Yeah. That's fine. Um yeah, that, that was gonna kind of move in. This was kind of my journey into your portrait work and some of what you're right. doing now. <laughs> Yeah. That, that I find like really interesting in, in, in um, just how you decide to explore color, shape, and even all of these are so much different than what I saw you doing with the the woman piece. Um, but just you know, kind of seeing what your your inspiration was in this in this space here. So I'm gonna go in order. Okay. Um, so what happened, or how I arrived with this the geometric face cubism kind of thing was I had gotten so frustrated with painting mm-hmm. and coloring things that in in real life like as a yeah. fine artist on canvas and stuff yeah that that was like step two step one my sketchbook is my tablet it don't matter what you put in it step two was was like yeah you can this is art like yeah. digital painting is art this how you are doing this not people can't not everybody can replicate it you know right. understand what you're doing so just go with it and mm-hmm. don't care what happens don't care what brush you use don't care what color you pick don't care if it's the light source is left right upside down just fill in the fill in the space yeah so that's what i was doing with the woman on the top right okay um, so that was not a commission piece. That was just me experimenting mm-hmm. with the style and um Zen Tangle designs, if you ever yeah. heard of Oh no, yeah, that, that was that was the part that made me think about teaching and, and, and educating. So I remember when I was when I was teaching a class and I had them doing Zen Tangles, I was just like, dang, I think I want to do a couple of these to add them into yeah. my work somewhere. So like when you had said that about like putting Zen Tangles on the woman piece, I was just like Dang, that sounds very familiar. <laughs> I can't know what that's like. It's like that comes from, you know, I taught this and I, I think I want to do this in my own work and, you know, kind of yeah. with that space of being an educator and how that's, it can inspire you as an artist. That's why I love it. I love, they inspire me to do stuff. I'll get mm-hmm. stuff in the curriculum and be like, oh, this is not a bad project. Well, <laughs> <just keep laughs> the whole thing right here. 
And, you yeah. Know, you, you my example yeah. for them, but like really go hard. Yeah. Have, have one that's like, oh, I, I tried. It's okay if it looks like this, y'all. Like, it's fine. Right. And have a like, super duper, like, exclusive one that you don't show because you don't want to hurt their feelings. Facts. <laughs> but, so that's how I was there with that. I was just like really frustrated. Um, then we get to uh, the portrait of one of my really good uh, friends that like, I can't even tell half the stories of mm. where I'm at as an artist and what I'm trying to do without mentioning, you know, her and how how she pushes herself and her business to make me, you know, stay on mine. I hear that. So that's why it was like an, an honor to uh, to paint her in this way. Mm. It was. Uh, she actually started this trend because I actually did another commission portrait. But so behind her, she's got all these uh, positive affirmations. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I just so for this one, I wanted to make sure that I was in a bit more of control. I wanted to focus more on lightness so that one in the top right, it was just, bam, go hard. Yeah. So this was like I liked it and I saw some success from it. And I was like, all right, so let me see if this is my style. Uh, let me try and refine this, re- replicate it, you know. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make sure that she definitely remained feminine. I wanted to make sure that she was soft and she's like that, you know, in real life. I wanted to have the emotional likeness and her likeness yeah. all there. And then she's got, you know, her affirmations behind it. So I just wanted it, you know, all to come together like that. And then, of course, that's where you see the Zen tangles in mm-hmm. the braids because that's way easier than shading in braids yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah and it's, cre- it's it's creative you know what i mean it's like how can i re- recreate this texture yeah um so the top left uh is arriving and i actually made that after i got picked up by uh it was this instagram page that like you yeah know, so i, I got picked up like i felt like i was arriving like I, did, I knocked off some goal on my mm-hmm. 21 list. So I was doing, um, I was still wanting to do abstract faces because I was like, they look flat. These harsh angles are interesting. If you throw in, you know, dark shades behind it, you can push and pull and make yeah. it up. But I'm still depending on a reference. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to see, to me, that's like the highest way you can operate as an artist. When you can just let your idea or whatever flow from your brain through you, you're so familiar with the mediums you use and your mm-hmm. talent so that you make it happen how you see fit. And then it's done in such a way that people, you know, gravitate towards. Yeah. So that's what I've been trying to, you can't perfect anything, but that's what I'm like, basically shooting jumpers in the gym with. Yeah. Like to get like to that, that reference. Where I wake up, I create something, you know, that can put a little money in my pocket. You can reprint, put on this and that. And then, um, you know, I run a different part of my business, but I guess we're getting to that part where I'm supposed to pin that and move it. But, mm. uh, so for arriving, that's where I was doing it again. Just starting with a basic geometric shape. I always start with noses. They're just fun to do. Okay. So I do nose, then I go left eye, then I go cheek, then I go right eye, then I try to do the head, then I do mm-hmm. the ear. And then I just kind of move through. But yeah. well, I, I was I was about to say like I was thinking about I was thinking about full figures and I was thinking about where I start on a drawing or something. But when it comes yeah. to the face, I do I do generally start around like the nose eye area because I've had my experience going like the opposite way that you just described, where you like kind of shape out the head and then fill in. I always like mess up the proportions. But uh, if I if I work from the inside out, yeah. I always can get them a lot more. You know, I can make it like I can I can make the head as big or as small as I want at that point. But once I make the head one size, I start to like mess it up and, and confuse myself oh, or yeah. end, end up with like you know things if, if i'm trying to get like more realistic also oh, i don't never like i um the luna's head method and all that stuff like, i just never i just go for it mm-hmm. like, 
draw it in the middle of the island and then like take the layer away mm -hmm. and then draw another part that's completely don't deal with nothing else and mm -hmm. then just drawing i'll draw like four or five eyes mm -hmm. and then pick which one i like the most and you know form the face that way um but yeah i just and this is another situation where in arriving i wanted to reflect you know my hometown um and using places that I, you know i've been and that i remember and things uh, so that's where I'm at with that one now. That's 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 where my my style is kind of drifting. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see what image I got next because I know it was either. All right. John is a teacher, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually, yeah, now that I remember, I had it was the, like the, I think the maybe the post before this that I actually wanted because it had like all the like writing that you had on the board. It was like, this is what we're going to do to let it know. Like, even though it's an art class, sometimes you just got to look at text. You know, you always got to deal with text. But then I was like, yeah, let me feature his students' work because it's kind of fire. Like, that portrait is dope. All of that. Yeah. And, 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 and you know, you yeah. know, in high school, right? High school, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, I was, I was thinking the other day because, like, it, like, after teaching college for a, a little bit, I was just like, would I, would I, pre would I prefer like grade school over high school, like college? Like I always told myself I want to deal with like serious artists because I feel like the conversations I really want to have are people that are already like at a certain point that I can like help them get over that. But like dealing with people that might not be sure if they're interested in art, I'm just like, I'm not, I don't got the time for that. Uh, but then I, was, yeah, I was like, I don't know if I'm like the type of person that wants to like groom somebody from like their youth and be like, I can make you into an artist. <laughs> uh, as opposed to like you're already like committed to being an artist and I could just help you see that like, like I, I pretty much like my experience as a master going through my master's program is like all right I can I can duplicate that for other people because it's like they're already interested and I can help them connect some dots and be like oh this is how I take it over to the next step um and I think I'm still in that in that point that might even be like what this channel kind of is like just having those conversations and Either, just, either like helping people come up, it's like, oh man, I didn't realize I was doing that. Like I did that with in a couple other conversations. Like, well, did you realize that your work is kind of? It's like I never looked back and realized that. But either way, uh, yeah. everyone, John is a teacher. Uh, yeah. This is uh, actually right. from year two. Year two, yeah, okay, yeah. But um, um, I think that ties into the to, to the YouTube thing that I wanted to talk about because I think they kind of correlate to like what your channel kind of um, deals with. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. everything is still like this is how you do this type of things, like a how to, and this is my experience from a like personal level. Um, so here's, <laughs> you know, I think one of his one of his names is really fun. Um, uh, you know, listening like I was, I was really just like, was well, let me watch one video just to like see what it is, and I ended up one. I was just like, I need to watch all these. I'm just like, I got into it. I was like, I'm, I'm curious. Like, I got interested in just the, the storyline. I was like, once I got into the story, I was like, I'm stuck. So I was like, here I go on, on video, <laughs> video. Here I am on video five, like. All right, let's see what he's talking about. <laughs> let's see how this thing ends. I had to know. Um, so this is just to let the, let the audience know that you, you do have a YouTube channel. They can go you check you out there. But um, I think these last two images are what I really wanted to talk about when it came to your YouTube channel and maybe like your process and how you can get, kind of talk through what you were doing from here to the final product. Right. Um, so with the woman, uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, it is... I get lucky if I'm able to draw a woman like how I'm talking about mm -hmm. like, my brain. Um, Cause that's just such a, it's not complicated, it's not fickle, but it's just an energy that's just hard to, to capture and, and keep. Mm -hmm. um, especially like, cause I always got the music going and you know, Meek Mill does not equal women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> does not equal women. But, so I got really lucky when I did this on canvas first. Mm -hmm. And then of course I was like, oh no, all right, I'm gonna paint it. I'm gonna get it. I'm getting hype. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna paint it. And I was like, mm -hmm. no. Nah. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna take a picture of it. Let me, let me, let me scout this out. Yeah. Again, Mr. Solomon, and then you use the technology that's available to you, you know, like the old masters did what the old masters did, but you got an apple. So yeah. You know, make it work so right. i was all right I'm, I'm, I'm leaning into it again still defining like fine digital art and fine art can coexist what you're doing is valid so i was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna see how valid it can be how how close are these two things like mm -hmm. do my skills translate let me physically see it that was the experiment 
Yeah. And then I got so wrapped up in how it was coming out digitally. Uh, so that was kind of, this piece was my realization. Like, yeah, there is an avenue for this. Because yeah. when you think of digital art, it's like these video gamey looking landscape stuff yeah. or like characters done over with switch with other tv show like it's yeah it's a fast thing right and i was just like dude just you put your out you put what you want out people people like it the amazing right. thing is that you thought of it and did it not the fact mm -hmm. that somebody clicked whatever so right i got really into the the digital painting part of it and explaining like what I was doing because at the same time my students were doing portraits so while I am teaching them how to draw eyes I'm also right. looking at my work and like you know what if I do mimic this bone here she'll mm -hmm. look more realistic so that's this is actually mm, midpoint because as I was doing it you know I'm, I'm changing things yeah, and the reason I was changing stuff is because I was educating them, and I was educating myself at the same time. Because I was like, I really got to make this work. I I like what I'm doing. I'm taking it from you know needing those reference photos to creating these scenes. Like, I don't necessarily know what they're doing when I draw yeah. these faces. I can put them you know where I want them. Yeah, but that's where it starts. And then I, I just stuck with the dish. I still have that drawn. I'll just be like, it's worth $2,000. It's the original rare right. sketch of it. That's my, that exactly. Was the that was the sketchbook. Right that here. was the sketch of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I was, even when I was following along, I noticed like, because you know, most of it was of the, the, um, the version of Procreate, but like I knew, like I saw, heard, like you know, I heard you referencing. I was like, oh yeah, so this, you know, was just saying that like, this was the idea to paint this originally, but now I'm gonna go to this and sketch it and see. And you said like, if anything I can duplicate here, I should be able to do in real life and vice versa. So I'm working with yeah. these colors so that eventually, you know, I can get to this final product on canvas. And so like even like hearing it, I was like, I haven't seen no canvas work from him. So like, does he got like <laughs> a secret secret canvas stash that he's like? These are the, you know, these are in the tuck, and this is what I go out with. But then, like, by the end of it, I was like, nah, he never got back to that canvas, bro. He's, <laughs> he's just thinking to this, to this digital. And then I was like, it's, and I feel the same way about my work sometimes, where like, um, some designs I will design like on Illustrator, uh, because it'll give me, that'll be my reference as opposed to like, I, you know, I might pull a reference from your know, real life and then I'll create a sketch of it digitally so that I know how, how to easily break it down when I move to my canvas. Uh, but at times I'm looking at the the digital like I could also yeah. sell this, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's a, there's a certain level of like perfection that I can reach because I have those opportunities to like go back and edit and change so it's so much easier than if I'm painting it in real life. So like even like one of the the, the like the first major mural I did, like the digital sketch is by far better, you know. But you know I had to try to you know translate that to a a, a, a mural to where like if I wanted to go sell prints of that that yeah. same bureau, but, you know, smaller. I'm like, I can get away with that. Like, why not? It's, it's tough. Speaking of, that just had an idea. I got to go find it now. Uh, there's, a, there's an exhibition call out here that I just found out about this. Like, uh, the, the theme is, like, being like, inspired by uh, street art or mural art. And I was just like, that's a mural that doesn't exist anymore because it got painted over. So maybe I could just use that and submit that and get away with it. <laughs> but that's, that's neat to hear. No, I just had it. That just reminded me of that. Anyway. This piece. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I think even interesting enough here, like, if, if people look hard enough, they'll see the differences where, like, you change the nose. And I remember you talking about it in the video. She was like, I don't like this nose anymore. And how you went back so many times, we're like, yeah, this ain't it. And he was like, you know, I just had to scrap it and come back to it. And you're like, watching you work through and like change the nose to what you wanted it to work out, uh, work out to be. And so I do want to go to like the final image because I thought it, it really came out really well. Um, how much of that background is is uh like what did you do to treat the background? Because it, it looks like a oh um, you know, like just tell me what you did with it. I think I, I think I have uh, an idea, but I can't verbalize it in my head right now. It's an actual street in DC. I'm horrible with directions. I cannot tell you, but it's on the way to the Capital One Arena. Um, 
My mom says that she's on a bus. I thought she was just walking, but you know, difference of opinion. But what I did was took a picture of the actual street, went over everything with the pencil, mm-hmm. tool, whatever you want to call it, yeah. then uh, reduced the opacity, uh, used the acrylic paint thing, mm-hmm. and just kind of go over section by section. So it's actually painted on, then you get rid of the picture underneath. Mm-hmm. Then I'll put uh, a motion blur on it because I wanted her to be moving. Yeah. And then I'll just add, you know, some folks in the back. But mm-hmm. it's all painted on. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just looking at like the depth and you know how, how much like of that is, is considered in the in the in the background as far as the detail. Yeah. And I, like I was curious, like, you know. Yeah. Was that you know? Was that uh, original image just kind of still layered under there to give it some of that? But you just painted over top of it, and you know, uh, you said reduced the opacity, but you said you just like took it away afterwards. So that's that's fire. And then yeah. even like I mean, I do. I, I mean, I like the, the the kind of the proximity of her to the front. And I can see both like her and that either maybe she is on a bus or walking down the street. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, like, even if like like it depends. Like you could have given a you know gave her a window to be by, and then boom, she's in the yeah. window. But I you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think even is this. I'm trying to remember if this looked like. I don't like. Maybe I didn't finish the video all the way. I feel like I saw a lot more. Yeah, I think you you were like you like some of those colors in the cheek were different, but then maybe you went back and did like made it all um, completely realistic as opposed to doing some of the like uh, spot color like you got in the, the clothing and the, and the earring. Yeah. So once I just committed to this being its own thing. That's mm-hmm. when I started to really get into the details um, and really making her just be her. So people are always easy for me. Like mm-hmm. her, she was, she existed on her own for a long time, you know? Mm-hmm. So what I actually do uh, is I have like a, a circle, right? So I'll draw the face and just, what does it look like they're doing? Tell me, you tell me the story. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll send it around, I'll get different ideas. And then um, I developed it from there. So this, like, for instance, this one piece I did, uh, this guy's, like, walking in the snow. It started with a face, zoomed out, gave him a body. He was dressed up for some reason. And then uh, I drew a random city. My sister was like, he looks like he's in London. So hmm. then I got to search London architecture. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, he does. So now I put the little street, those random black, poles that they yeah had. Um, yeah i made sure the buildings had like the similar window treatments and stuff but that's how it go like the faces they just come out of experimentation and mm-hmm. just find where they at yeah you know i think yeah. that the fun part about like hearing you talk about this on your youtube channel i'm gonna try to keep like shouting that out so people know the <laughs> but like the fun part like hearing you talk about it like it was inspiring me too like for my own channel to like it was like it's one thing to watch somebody do it and be like, oh, this is fun. This is interesting. I really like this. But like to hear what you're talking about and, and how you got arrived at this point. Because even what you're talking about now, like there's so much that's not, you know, in this conversation that I was hearing. I was like, this is how I arrived at this point. This is how I changed the nose. This is why I'm choosing to do this. Like yeah. even like when you pulled in your reference, like I don't even, like, honestly, I don't even know how you found a, a image that was like remotely yeah. close to what you were doing. I was like, that, I what do you mean you I didn't? Just- like this is the exact same chick. Like you, you clearly just abstracted <laughs> this woman. Like this is it. Like you abstracted uh, her. <laughs> like you Google a uh, woman looking three quarters with a ponytail, <laughs> <laughs> and you got it. Like that's what it just came out. Like boom, there she go. Uh, I did a lot of searching, but yeah, <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> that, I mean, that's how I talk to my students, though, because yeah. with high school. Um, cause you were talking about, you know, what I want to do with somebody that don't want to take art seriously, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's mostly like, well, first I set the precedent, like this is my career. So yeah, we're not going to pretend like if you think this is BS, you can go like, yeah. there's other ways to get your art credit because in here we're going to learn how to do, you know? Yeah. Work. So I'm always transparent with them about like when I make a mistake, mm-hmm. how I fix the mistake, you know, because for them, Oh man, I, I drew my name on the front and not the back. The world is over. This is stupid. I got you know. I started. Yeah. I didn't use a ruler. This line is crooked, and they erase it, and then the line is still there. And I, I don't know. What to, like that's their that's their their crisis. Yeah. So 
to com- combat that is like even the master, you know what I mean, makes mistakes, but because I am the man, I know how to fix it. And this is how mm-hmm. you can so just chill out. Or, or yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how you know I talk to him. I mean that that was true to fact. Like that's how I talked to him in that in those videos, like especially with virtual teaching, which is how I got started with the YouTube stuff anyway, because okay. I felt like I was a YouTuber. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's basically what school came down to, pre-recording mm-hmm. videos and then hey, watch this and do it and send me a picture. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I hear that. Yeah, it, it was like it, um just to speak a little bit towards like teaching virtually, because like I've had like it's, it's for me it's a little bit difficult teaching like traditional art virtually. Because it's like I, I can't be there to help them in those mistakes and be like, yo, like let me stop you before you go too far yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and help you you know fix this along the way, you know, help you build this up. And then boom, you can move forward. Uh, and even like in my, my the recent class I've been teaching, like two out of like sixteen students are art majors. The rest of them are, like some other majors. So like I can't I can't I can't really gauge their interest in arts. I, some of them I can tell because like they're turning in projects, and I'm like, let me double check: is this an art major or not? What are you doing doing this? You sociology? <laughs> you sure you're in the right major? <laughs> like same thing, but. Um, yeah, it's definitely been an interesting, almost difficult space for me, uh, kind of dealing with that. But um, I think all in all, like I, 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 I think it's interesting how I can like you can just find so much interest in somebody if you just like take a look at their their social media life for a little bit, and regardless of whatever connection you might have with them, I just like I was just like, oh, cool, my man's got it's a lot of stories to tell here. And I think the, you know the YouTube channel helped too. Like it happened with the last person I interviewed. Where I was just like listening to a video of his. I was like, oh man, I got a lot more to ask this person now. So, um, so yeah, man, it, it, and you know, so the, the whole like idea for me with this channel and, and talking to people has just been, uh, for one, for one, it, for me, it's like it's good inspiration for having just moved out here and like having not really having my usual cohort of artist friends and and those connections. So it's like, how can I still get some or create some of those connections and to have some of these conversations and tell these stories that it can either potentially inspire people or and help them see, let, you know, let people see that you know I ain't alone in this. Like <laughs> I got a cohort somewhere out here that that all do you know do different things and, and see how they get to a certain point but all right that was the, that was the thing we thought about you were talking about like becoming full-time artist and maybe like define what that is for you so yeah i do i did want to get back around to that and we'll kind of like maybe finish off on that so okay. where are you at with things i saw you had to pr- you got the new printer yes and you were like you kind of mentioned it in that post so that was like you know point pointer one it was like yeah this is bulletin one i got a printer I, i'm moving in the direction i want to go <laughs> <laughs> um so I would say 2019 was when I officially like considered myself an artist um and then wanted to pursue it full time with teaching on the side. Right now, you know, teaching and I do art on so I want to flip right. it. Right. So hard. part of that is um being able to manufacture my own, you know, merchandise and prints. Mm-hmm. So I bought the large scale printer, and the reason why I knew about it is, you know, working, you know, those graphic design jobs and yeah. getting around plotters and stuff. So I was like, you know what? It'd be dope if I had it for myself, because again, if I really, well, which I want to do is be a digital artist, you know, mm-hmm. that's a part of it. It it can't just be on the screen. It's got to right. live in life. You have to see it, you know. Okay, you can NFT people, it. Yeah, you know, Instagram is a square, but it's 16 by 20, you know, in real yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then, you know, I was using third-party sites and stuff, and yeah. like, you just don't make what you, you need. So, yeah. like I said, with this printer, it was like the first step to being able to handle the art business side mm-hmm. of full-time artists. Because, like, I want to be able to make my stickers i want to be able to make mugs and mm-hmm. my print and that's it i'm happy you know I like whatever that. i create for those three things i'm just gonna be the best at those three things for that i like that i like that a lot the other side of it is being you know a tattoo artist because mm-hmm. that's that's fast money that's like daily nine to five you can get it yeah. the art business stuff is you know you you know commissions come but so and yeah come, so so 
I want to rely heavily on the tattoo stuff. That's why I'm still studying, rededicating to that. Um, investing in the art business with the equipment so I can just, you know, keep everything in house. Yeah. Just as I create it, just walk over there and make it happen and walk out of the door. Right. <laughs> and right. Then, um, I guess the third part would be the education thing. So, mm -hmm. um, I mean, this year has been tough with teaching. Uh, I do love the classroom. I love those connections. Mm -hmm. But I also like teaching my way without having to enter attendance. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like it. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, man, the, the hardest part about teaching is like is the the politics, Great. man. Yeah, all of that. I was like, I gotta grade That's this. Great. I gotta. A, they need a rubric to, to like prove that they got the like. Well, I don't care about none of this stuff. <laughs> it looked horrible, and now it look great. Like you, hey, that's done. Why do I have to? <laughs> right. Yeah, did you see? <laughs> right. But, um, yeah. So I want to definitely work on like doing summer camps um mm -hmm. not necessarily i want to do sip and paints but with digital art yeah instead of mailing you a kit you just have your mm -hmm. logo on it and we all on zoom and we drawing together something like that but i want to be mm -hmm. moved to my own classes yeah you know? so because i love teaching i love it i love it I right that. so it's like those three things are what make me happy as an artist. Those are what make me happy as a person. So mm -hmm. pursue it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. They all they all lay into one another for the success. So mm -hmm. yeah, I've I've always felt like you know you give me four or five students max, and I'm I'm happy. You know what I mean, four dedicated students, and we just working on stuff. I'm happy. You know what I mean, because we can. It, it, it's it's you know. I'd rather, I think I'm much more, I think it's it's the more of like the big brother role that I enjoy more than yeah. necessarily the professor or the teacher, because that was something like growing up, I always had older siblings and I always wanted to be one. And the few chances that I had, I, I, you know, I, I didn't get into, to fully fulfill them. So when I did, you know, eventually get like, you know, friends of the family that had little boys um, or, you know, had little children, I could, you know, be big, bigger brothers to for, you know, a year or two while they were young, whatever. I always, like, took that, you know, kind of role kind of serious. So maybe it's, maybe that's my, like, it's like, you know, I, I just want to be here in the same space. We, we all working, but, like, ask me questions and I can help you. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I got you. I can help you think and see beyond this. And, and I like to see that people receive that information well and, and to be inspired by it. Um, but, you know, I can't, like, it's the, it's the knuckleheads that, that really bother me. You know, it's like, why can't you why are you coming to class once a month <laughs> like, asking me about your work? And then I'm always one like, you can do it. But like, I had to learn how to like, all right, I'm not going to give you my attention like that. This is what you can do, but you can't ask me nothing else about it. <laughs> when the work is done, then I can yeah. talk to you about it. <laughs> but right. I got to attend to these people that's doing I want to make them better. And I can't do that if they stuck with you and trying to do it themselves and I'm giving you all my attention. So, so yeah, like teaching, like that, like, I think I always wanted to like, I've always fought teaching because my mother's a teacher and I was like, I don't want to do what my mother's doing or did because, you know, I've I seen that realm. I don't want to live in that space. Yeah. And then I always looked at my art teachers for the most part. Like I didn't see them doing what I wanted to be doing at that time where it was like exhibiting and, you know, creating artwork. Like Solomon was like the one artist out of all of our professors, maybe Solomon and, and, and Pofo, like I saw yeah. them creating their works and, and it was a part of that experience. You know, like I went to you know, help uh, and Pofo uh, uh, um, take some work to an exhibition before and, you know, work with Solomon and saw him doing some stuff while I come in the studio on a random weekend when the door was supposed to be closed and he in there like funking it up with his fiberglass and he's like, oh, what's good? Yeah. Yeah, uh, don't come in here too long because <laughs> I ain't got no mask for you, but you know, I'm in here working. Let me show you what I'm doing, but you got to leave in like ten minutes, so you can get sick. And I'm like, all right. So like, you know, that's why him and like him and like him and our relationship became one that was more like you know brothers because you know those type of interactions. Um, and and so like teaching has always been like like I enjoy when I'm doing it, but it's really just like the time that we're working. Outside of that, I'm like I don't want to do all this other stuff. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to have to prove. I don't want to have to prove that they've learned. <laughs> I <Yes>. know. <laughs> it's like I know that they've learned. <laughs> I can tell. I don't need to prove to you. I can tell. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so yeah, like that's that's that's, that's, that's like that's a space I enjoy too. Like I know when I I'm trying to remember what I don't remember what year it was, but I mean like same thing with me when it come to like defining myself as an artist. So when I felt like I was a full time artist, 
Mm-hmm. Like I had like three or four art jobs that were, you know, all over the place. But all of my jobs had to relate with art and to where it was like, I'm not maybe, okay, I'm not in that studio and all I do is make artwork and sell it. Like that's not what being a full-time artist looks like to me any, you know, anymore at that point. It was like, I was working as a um, art handler at a, at a at a major museum. I was like, <laughs> this is major. I'm hanging, you know, like, you know, priceless yeah. artworks. This is art, <laughs> this is art. You know, I mean, in all these jobs I was doing, I was working part-time. So I didn't feel like it was, I was invested, you know, all of my time into that to say that, that was right. my full-time job. I was like, now these are, these are hobbies, or this is my, you know, this is my side gigs. And all of this is helping to, 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 you know, push up my career. And, and you know, all right, now I know how to hang artwork multiple ways, or I know how to frame works different ways from this one job. And then I'm, you know, teaching. So, all right, I got that part and, you know, exhibiting all that stuff. So I was like, I, I, all my jobs are art related. I'm a full-time artist. I might not be in the studio and, Whatever I might I might get a W two at the end of the year from a couple places, but <laughs> I still claim it as you know being a full time artist. So I, I, I like I think I had a conversation with um, some high school students about that before like, mentioning that too. I was like, you, you really got to define that for yourself because it can look so many different ways. Uh, mm-hmm. But so long as you know you're, you're getting your fulfillment out of what it is you're doing, and you're not you know maybe you're not you know I think even if I was working at Lowe's and like the lumber department, I would be happy because I was just like, well not happy, but. Yeah. I'll be able. I'll be able to twist that and be like, "Well, I need lumber to do what I'm doing. I'm building, <laughs> building stuff, make my own frames or whatever. So I need yeah supplies. I need them discounts, bro. <laughs> you know what it is. Um, uh, I think I got all my stuff checked off, John. Ooh. Give me a. Give me a. You know how to find you, follow you. So I'm I add it all in the bottom. Really active on Instagram, John D dot ill author uh the website is john d ill author.com uh that's where you can book me that's where i'll do uh tickets selling for sipping paints and classes and stuff mm-hmm. um but and my youtube is john d ill author you just search that uh but yeah I, I mean, if you follow me on instagram you can find the other stuff yeah I, i'm usually uh pretty active on the stories that's how i put my like what i'm working mm-hmm. on you know yeah yeah, yeah, and I'll add in a couple of links maybe to some of those books uh, that we had mentioned because you know that's still that's still revenue for what it is. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll throw a couple of those in there. Um, so that's that's good. That's dope. I, yeah, and I, I remember I, I was just I was sitting. You know, you commented on, or I think you either you might think you might just liked my one of my other videos, and I was just like. What yeah, I, I, I was like, let me holler at John. Let me see if I can do this with John. Like, why not John? He, he out here doing things in the in the in the space that I want to be like talking about this stuff. So I'm like, I'll do this do this with John then. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. It was fun. It was fun. I'm always a point Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reached out. To, I reached out to both of y'all the same day. I was just like, let me hit up both of them. See what's up. I, I got I, I got to try to you know, schedule one with her. I was trying to do it before her show ended. To maybe yeah. help support it for, before it ended, yeah. I was like, I still want to go back because I think you know her story is really interesting to me too. Because um, knowing that we were all you know in that space at the same time in college, and then you know as we watch people's lives play out over you know however many years, and then to see that like this explosion she's going through of just like yo, I'm I'm back in this yeah. game, I'm creating blah, blah blah. But then like to see that she's got got back into that space, and like I just want to hear what like that story was, like what was her inspiration, what got her there, and. Yeah. And she came in that space like hard. Like her work is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a style right there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, so yeah, I look forward to you know seeing more what you what you what you what you come up with and create. Um watching watching your, your style grow is really what's was what got me like interested and curious just to watch like over the past whatever couple of years or so just like oh look at his drawing Scott's scout style and everything like and and so like I could I, I don't know I could you know, at this point I, I feel like there was a point when I got into grad school I was like well I could like see when people have like arrived at certain points of their like you know their levels I was like oh he's getting he's let's talk to him <laughs> he got he got there I know where he's at let's talk to him <laughs> so uh, see you, man. Uh, again, like you know, I, I wish you all the success, of course. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, still looking for looking forward to more. And you know, maybe we'll come on some other time or something as as things progress. Right. Well, I appreciate, it, man. You too. Much success, to you too. And uh, man, keep doing what you're doing, man. It's awesome. For sure. All right. So we're gonna sign out. Well, this is sign out. It's me, uh, Agent yeah. <laughs> MJ, with my gray patch. 
and uh, we're still young out here. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. All right, John. I'll holler at you another time, man. Peace.